praying from here on Mother Ganga's sacred, sacred banks that you are safe, healthy, and healthy in the mind as well, peaceful, not stressed, not bored or frustrated, not looking for something to distract you all day, alcohol or drugs, not getting violent with your family members or with yourself. It's interesting because when a lot of people sit down to meditate and they first sit, there's a lot of restlessness. A lot of people say, oh, I just I can't meditate, <laughs> can't meditate, can't sit still. And one of the, the techniques, the practices that I give really frequently is If the mind thinks that by annoying you to no end, you're going to stand up from your meditation and walk away, it'll keep annoying you. And if sometimes it wins, it's that love, what we study in, in psychology about intermittent rewards, where if sometimes it works, sometimes your mind annoying you actually gets you to leave your meditation and walk away from it, it'll keep doing it because it never knows when it's going to work. Like it worked one time, hasn't worked now in five times, but it worked once, I'll keep doing it. And so one of the practices that I give is set an alarm and tell yourself that no matter what, No matter what, until that alarm goes off, unless the house is on fire, you are not going to stand up from your meditation. And what happens with that is when the mind knows it has no way out, it knows that no matter how much it annoys you, no matter how much it pesters you, no matter how many times it says, bet you left the coffee maker on, you are not going to stand up. Because of course you, when you know what your mind does, you start to make a list, all right, before I sit down, double check the coffee maker. Double check whatever it is that my mind uses to try to get me to stand up. Such that when I sit down and I turn that alarm on, I know. Until that alarm goes off, I'm not budging. And it allows the mind, actually, after it kicks and it screams, when it knows that kicking and screaming is not going to make you stand up, it actually helps it relax. Like a child throwing a temper tantrum who you just hold in your arms and knows he's not going to run. You're just going to hold him and love him, and you're not going to budge. And so the mind settles. And I mention that at this time because the lockdown, for those of us who are privileged, for those of us who have a place to be locked down in that is safe, that is healthy, for those of us who have access to food and water, for those of us for whom it is merely an inconvenience, not a massive threat to the health of our body, for most of us, certainly for the overwhelming majority joining us for satsang. 
When the lockdown happens, the mind plays most of the same games. It's going to try to do whatever it can to unnerve you. You may not be able to physically leave the house, but it's going to try to do whatever it can to make sure that you don't actually drop down into a place of peace a place of stillness, a place of surrender. And it's going to play all kinds of games. Games of anxiety, games of fear, games of stress. To do whatever it can to make you frustrated and restless and abusing alcohol or drugs or your family members or whatever it may be. And in the same way that we deal with the mind when we're going to sit to meditate, we have the opportunity to deal with it the same way. Okay, so we know that which triggers our frustration or our stress, sanitizing, clean hands. I mean, that's a very valid concern, like the coffee maker setting a fire to your house, valid concern. So we have our list, we know. When I'm going to sit down to meditate, when I'm going to be in this space, in this cave of my home, I've got my, my checklist. House is safe and sanitized. That which is coming in is safe and sanitized. No chance of getting infected, doing whatever we need to do, staying home, maintaining the distance. That's that checklist. And then we sit down. And we set that alarm. I'm not going to budge until that alarm goes off. And it's a practice to do both for your actual meditation when we sit to meditate. In the morning, in the evening, both, either. Whatever works for your flow of the day. But it also applies to this time of lockdown. The difference is that we don't get to decide when the alarm is set for. That's in the universe's hands, but it's still the same. Here we are. Not going to budge, can't budge, can't go out, can't go back to the life that, that I had until this thing lifts. And the minute that we really, really accept that, It allows us to do a bit of a deep dive into some peace, into some spaciousness, into some stillness, because the mind knows no matter how many temper tantrums I throw, literal in my home or in just my own mind, I'm not going anywhere. Might as well exhale. Might as well drop down into that spaciousness. And this is a, a reminder and a reminder and a reminder for all of us every day. We do whatever we can, as much as we can. And then we exhale into this space. <laughs>